Hi, today we'll be having a look at how we can restrict access to certain operations within our GraphQL API using the Envelope plugin system. If you've not used Envelope before, it's the missing GraphQL plugin system. It allows you to hook into the request cycle of a GraphQL request. Here we can see we can hook into the parse, validate and execute functions of GraphQL to provide some actions on what happens before or after those. We'll be using the operation field permissions plugin that allows us to specify what plugins can be used based off the permissions of a user that's requesting your API. Let's move on over to the code and have a look at what we have. Here we have a simple project using TypeScript and GraphQL Yoga. Inside of server.ts, we have a GraphQL Yoga. We also have a type for our user here, and then we have an array of users this could come from a database. Then we have some type definitions where we have a query to fetch a user by ID. And then we have two mutations to promote or delete a user. Then further on down, we have our resolvers, which simply return true for both of our mutations. And we have a query that fetches a user by ID from that list of users that we have hard coded above. Then we have some context, which fetches the user ID from the headers. And then it specifies the user by fetching it from that same array of users where the ID matches. And then we return that user to the GraphQL context. We can then use that context like we would inside of here. So we could fetch user from the resolver of our query or mutation. We're not going to be using that today because we'll be accessing the context inside of a plugin. And further on down here is where I have an array of plugins that's passed to GraphQL Yoga. Let's first go ahead and install the dependency that we need. This will be the envelope operation field permissions plugin. Now with that installed, let's go ahead and import use operation field permissions from the envelope plugin. Then further on down where we have our plugins, we now want to specify an array of all of our different plugins. Here we'll invoke the use operation field permissions and we can provide the object with our operation scope options. I'll be modifying the get permissions property here. This fetches the context that we have defined above in our GraphQL server. Then we'll need to return a new set of permissions for our users. So I'm going to fetch the permissions from my user. Let's remove any type errors for now until we complete the next step. Further on above, I'm going to update my type for users. And here we'll say that the permissions is an array of strings. This could well be in your database where you have an array of different users and stored alongside each record, you have all of the different permissions that they are allowed or not allowed to do. Then for each of my users, I will provide an array of strings, including the permissions to the queries, mutations, and types. So the first permission here will be to run the query user and we'll allow this user to fetch the user.id. Then further on down for Lauren, we'll specify an array of plugins and here we'll specify that we can run query.user and we can fetch all of the different user fields. Then for Uri, we can provide an array of strings, including our permissions. And here we'll specify that we can run any query, but we only want to run the mutation promote user and the delete user mutation. You can also add this so we can allow all mutations, but let's keep it to the restricted list of these permissions. If we save this and return to where we have context and plugins defined, we can then access from the get permissions, the context for our user. Then we can spread into this new set, all of the different permissions that we've just defined above. So let's start the server and we'll head on over to localhost 4000 slash GraphQL. Let's specify in the request headers that we'll send the authorization. And here I'm going to send the user ID one. Then for the first user, we'll fetch the ID where the ID is one and we'll fetch the ID. If we try to fetch the user by ID one, and we also try to fetch the name using the authorization header with the value one, we'll see here we have insufficient permissions for selecting the user.name. This is because back inside of our code for each of our users, the user with the ID one was only allowed to access the user query and the ID of a user. If we switch this to two, we'll be able to run this and return both the ID and name. But if we now switch to make an A mutation and we'll call promote user and we'll pass the ID of one user. If we pass the same request headers and we now try to execute this mutation, we'll see here that we are unable to perform this mutation. And that's because the user with the ID two is not allowed to perform any mutation nor is the user with the ID one allowed to perform any mutation. But if we specify that we want to authenticate using the user with the ID three, this is then allowed to run both of those mutations that we have available. If we now run the queries to fetch our user by ID and we fetch the user with ID three and we pass in three for our user ID, we'll see here that we have insufficient permissions for selecting the user ID and name. This is because back inside of our code, 
For our users, we specified that the user with the ID 3 was allowed to run all queries. However, we didn't specify what fields they could fetch on that user query. So here we'll have to specify the type user. Then we can provide all for that query. And if we save, we should now be able to run that query and fetch all of those fields. The code that you've seen here to restrict access to certain queries, permissions, and types shouldn't be used alone. You should look to use some advanced authentication inside of your resolvers to authorize what can or cannot be used. Hopefully this video has given you enough to get started in adding more security around who can do what with your API.